Here's my take. Watching the extraordinary polarization in Washington today, many people have pointed the finger at the Tea Party. It's ideologically extreme, refuses to compromise, and cares more about purity than problem solving. I happen to agree with much of that critique, but it doesn't really answer the question, why has the Tea Party become so prominent? Why is it able to dominate Washington? We've had plenty of ideologically charged movements come to Washington before. Think of Barry Goldwater or George McGovern. But once in Washington, the system encouraged compromise and governance. But over the last few decades, what has changed are the rules organizing American politics. And they now encourage small interest groups, including ideologically charged ones, to capture major political parties as well as Congress itself. Call it political narrowcasting. Here are some examples. Redistricting has created safe seats so that for most House members, their only concern is a challenge from the right for Republicans and the left for Democrats. The incentive is to pander to the base, not the center. Party primaries have been taken over by small groups of activists who push even popular senators to extreme positions. In Utah, for example, 3,500 conservative activists managed to take the well-regarded Senator Robert Bennett off the ballot. GOP senators like Orrin Hatch and John McCain have moved farther to the right, hoping to stave off similar assaults. Changes in congressional rules have also made it far more difficult to enact large compromise legislation. In the wake of the Watergate scandal, sunshine rules were put into place that required open committee meetings and recorded votes. The purpose was to make Congress more open, more responsive. And so it has become to lobbyists, money, and special interests, because they're the people who watch every committee vote and mobilize opposition to any withdrawal of subsidies or tax breaks. Political polarization has been fueled by a new media, which is also narrowcast. Representative Darrell Issa, Republican of California, gave an interview to the Wall Street Journal in which he suggested that he might further the conservative agenda through an occasional compromise. That provoked a tirade from Rush Limbaugh, which then produced a torrent of angry emails and phone calls to ISA's office. ISA quickly and publicly apologized to Limbaugh and promised only opposition to Obama. Multiply that example a thousandfold and you have the daily dynamic of Congress. It's depressing, but the fact that our politics are the result of these structural shifts means they can be changed. Mickey Edwards, a Republican and former House member from Oklahoma, has a highly intelligent essay in Atlantic magazine suggesting a series of reforms that could make a difference. Some of them are large scale, others are seemingly small but crucial changes in congressional procedure. The essay is on our website. Read it. Some political scientists long hoped that American parties would become more ideologically pure and coherent, like European parties. They seem to have gotten their wish, and the result is abysmal. Here's why. America does not have a parliamentary system like Europe's, in which one party takes control of all levers of political power, executive and legislative, enacts its agenda, then goes back to the voters. Power in the United States is shared by a set of institutions with overlapping authorities, Congress, the presidency. People have to cooperate for the system to work. The Tea Party venerates the founding fathers. It should note that the one thing on which they all agreed was that adversarial political parties were bad for the American Republic.